What a great afternoon, everybody. My name is Dark, and welcome back to Mindustry. So this video has been suggested in the comment on the previous video. Uh, it was the remaster of the well starter guide since it was really long and it was pretty bad. So yeah, I made a remaster. It's much shorter, and I hope it contained enough information. So yeah, here we are. This is a follow-up to that. So today we're going to be tackling the basic must-have schematics. So yeah, let's proceed. Okay, first schematic is, of course, graphite. Well, for for those who are new, it's not really of course, because they don't know this thing. But yeah, so graphite presses are extremely useful. Um, well, this kind of schematic at least, because instead of making, uh, uh, let's say, a line and then like doing this, and graphite, 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 it's making things more complicated. So instead, this specific schematics will instantly convert all your coal to graphite really fast. So yeah, I'm not gonna go into the details of, well, how this works or how all of these schematics work. We're just here to tackle the schematics themselves. And by the way, all schematics you'll be seeing in this video will be available down in the description below as a download link. So, yeah. So I guess that's pretty much it for this graphite and let's proceed. Okay, so the next schematics are silicone. So this is the most basic type of silicone, well, you know, scalable thing silicone-wise or factory-wise, you know. So, yeah, this is the most basic silicone factory you can get that's a schematic and actually very useful. So, of course, you need coal and sand and, of course, conveyor belts. So, this specific schematic doesn't exactly need, like, level 1 conveyors because you can grab silicone with freaking titanium conveyors already. So this kind of is basically not good since you can already mine titanium before you get silicone. So this thing is more applicable than the other one. So of course, silicone needs power. And here we go. As you can see, it works like a charm. Also, I'm not gonna go with the details of how this works again. So, yeah, I guess the more advanced stuff will go on, like, advanced schematics next time. So, yeah, let's proceed. Okay, so you've got your silicone, and you want to upgrade your power from combustion to steam. So, yeah, I guess this is pretty much the best, well, source of power you can get. It's very easy to do. It's quite cheap, really. And it's not that complicated, especially when you have a schematics. Well, nothing's really complicated in schematics. So yeah, this is a scalable steam generator schematic. So you can get variants of this schematic with just single ones, and you can just extend it this way. And of course, you need coal. Coal and spore press would work. So... Yeah, and of course we need to kickstart it up. There we go. And now it generates power. Oh, of course, don't forget to like connect these two sides, because these the north and south sides of this are not connected. Or you can just click the batteries, it would work as well. So yeah. This is very, very recommended, and I use this all the time in all my games. Especially right when I get silicone, I immediately upgrade my power. So this is insanely useful. You should really grab this. Alright, so let's say you've got, well, meta glass already. Uh, I don't really, I didn't include meta glass here since it's very easy to make. Uh, it needs lead and sand, and you can go away with just one factory of that, so yeah, we're skipping meta glass. So, yeah, this is plastanium, probably the second last, most important second last <laughs> uh, resource you need to get in industry. So with this, you can 
with Listanium you can build overdrive projectors, um, meltdowns, no not meltdowns, um, cyclones, specters, all the cool and powerful stuff. So yeah, this is, well I don't really wanna, you know, most people don't want to like build Listanium stuff, factories, uh, die themselves since it's quite complicated. You need like to input sand on the oil, and then the same water, you get what I mean. So yeah, this thing is very helpful if you really don't want to get frustrated. Just like on every game you make, and it just discourages you to build. So yeah, all you need is titanium, and of course sand. Oh, oh by the way, follow these specific inputs, uh, otherwise it won't work. You gotta input it on this router and on this bridge conveyor. Hmm. So yeah. Oh wait, power. And then so far, this is the best plastanium schematic I've ever found. Heck, I can't even make something this good since it's four. The maximum I was able to build was three, and it made use of unloaders. I think it's right here. This one. So yeah. It makes use of unloaders, which is not really the best, but you only have to input like titanium and an oil extractor and in one oil extractor and input sand in also one oil extractor. So yeah, let's proceed. Okay, so for the last resource you can get in my industry as of right now at its at its current state is search alloy. So, you need a search alloy to make, well, meltdowns, specters, uh, I don't know what else you can grab, uh, impact reactor is the most powerful uh, power generator thing in the game, and probably just that. I might be forgetting something, but yeah, oh, of course, your uh, player upgrade pads or ship pads. We're not gonna go into that, so let's proceed. So yeah, this makes use of your core. Um, it's also really hard. Not really hard. It's frustrating to look for uh, look in the map for resources you need. One example for that would be this schematic here. Ah, this one. This one specifically. So you're gonna need uh -huh, copper. Silicone and then lead titanium and the output goes here. Which is quite hard. Like you're gonna make a separate factory just for this. It consumes a lot of silicone, a lot of lead, and you're gonna have a really, really hard time if you started running out of lead just because of this. So yeah, to make everything simple, I designed this and you can actually just go away with one of these. And so yeah, once you have enough stuff like copper, lead, titanium, and silicone, silicon, uh, you can do this. And of course, um, where is that? Okay, of course you can also use three of this or even extend it. But you're gonna have to input like, I don't know, this guy with lead since... It's kind of, it's kind of bleeding, you know. Uh, not, not really bleeding. Uh, it's lacking stuff already. As you can see, it runs out of lead because this thing needs more lead than anything else. Seriously, I mean, like, let's check. Ah, search alloy smelter. It needs four lead, which is a lot. Well, look at three, two, and three, and then four lead, which is a lot. So. Yeah, if you plan to ex on extending that, I suggest uh, the, the alloy smelters in between the, the first and the end, you input lead. Otherwise, it would lag behind. Oh, also, quick tip. Do not do this because the silicone will backflow. That's just one flaw of this, this design, but it, you can easily overlook that. Uh, you don't really need that to like get fixed because you can just do that. If you're really tight on, you know, the spaces that you create or consume, I guess it matters. So yeah, you can design your own. 
Okay, for the miscellaneous stuff, we have this. Credits to Cresolex. He invented this, I think. Um, yeah, this is basically the most basic storage you can ever have. I mean, it works. It's nearly as good as one container. It's just... Uh, I don't know how much you can store. The container can store 300. And this thing can store about 280, I think. We'll see. Okay, it can store 204. 76, lacking of my freaking estimation, but... You're pretty good for no silicone, because with containers, you need unloaders. Which need silicone. So, it's what's even cool is that you can see the status of the stuff that's inside. It circulates and circulates, you know, you can see how much stuff there is without actually looking at it. I mean, just the vague amount that it has. And if it's like dwindling in resources, you can actually see those things that spin. It's a, it's a cool effect, seriously. It's really cool. And it's dwindling, dwindling, and then gone. Yeah, it's really cool. I like this design. Great work, Cresslex. It's really, really good. I highly suggest you guys watch his channel. He makes lots of great tips about my industry. Things you may not know and some... Or a lot of designs, really, but... Yeah, so let's proceed. Okay, now on to defenses. This thing is insanely simple. But I still suggest having a schematic for it. Especially with maps in which there are like scraps scattered everywhere and lead. Instead of freaking, uh, I don't know, manually putting this and then scatters. And there's like a lot of ghoul bombers and wraith fighters like running around like flies in your map or base. You, you can't afford to like pause or, well you can pause but it's also more frustrating. And yeah, you can't afford to just place them down one by one. So instead, I made this. When there are patches of lead in your map, you can just place that, place that, place that, place that, place that, place that there, and boom, you have well patches of air defenses. This this works. This seriously works. And quite effectively, I must say, as long as it, you have enough of it. And by the way, the best a resource you can only use scatters with this is scrap and lead. So yeah, make sure your map has scrap and lead. Okay, for the last one, and it's a drone. So I highly suggest having phantom builders, especially when you have a large base, a large defense, and it all gets wiped out. And you don't want to build. You don't want to rebuild because it's so many it's frustrating, it takes a long time. So I propose this one. It's modular, scalable, you can have as many as you want, and it works. And yeah, you can also make this leech off the core, just like the uh, search alloy. And yeah, it's really up to you. But yeah, this freaking works. Power infinite, let's go. And of course, the last one, and then the ones in between will be lagging. The last one will be perfectly fine in the start. You no. Know. Okay, speeding things up. And I guess you can say uh, they all get built. Uh, okay. Okay, this guy is taking a while. I mean, I really suggest having phantom builders because they're freaking important. Not, not really important, but it's gonna make your life much, much, much easier in the long run. Oh, and they also repair buildings, which is cool. I think. So yeah, I guess it's gonna be it for this episode of Schematics. I hope you guys learned something new, or at least for the new guys in my industry. Uh, I hope I was able to help. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for this episode of my industry. If you liked the video, then be sure to like button. And if you loved it, be sure to subscribe the subscribe button into the ground. And don't forget to hit that bell button to get notified for the future videos. It's pretty much it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!